This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Soul Again, a no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. What's going on, guys? Josh Holyfield here, and welcome back to another episode of Make America Soul Again where I'm here with you on this phenomenal, fantastic, and amazing Tuesday evening to hopefully provide you with some motivation, some information, and some inspiration. We took our house off the market this week. It's been on there since the end of October. We've gotten a few showings, hadn't gotten any offers. So I went ahead and made the decision that I'm going to go ahead and invest the money into the house to get it to a place where it's what we would consider rental ready which requires that we do some painting on the entire interior of the home and replace the floors and the upstairs. It's about a $10,000 investment, but I think it's something that needs to happen in order for us to get an offer on the home and get this thing sold. So it was kind of funny because I had been working over the past couple of weeks, just kind of slowly plugging away at the paint one room at a time, just kind of getting it done. I've got the sprayer. I've got all the tools that I need to make this an efficient and effective job. The biggest thing right now is creating the time in between managing this business and the other contracts that I have, as well as my clients, and making sure that this doesn't suffer while I focus on painting my house. So like I said, I I spent some time doing that today, which was cool. And it was funny as shit because I had the realtor take the house off the market. Hey, look, Let's just pull the thing down. We don't want to get any scheduled showings while this place is in shambles. I've got masking tape up all over the baseboards and the ceilings, and it's just not ready for a showing, right? And so the day I had her pull it down off of MLS and pull the listing down, we got a call from the real terms like, hey, we got buyers that want your house. I told them that we pulled it down because you're doing work on the inside, and they want to come see it anyway. I'm like, so that's a good sign. I think we may potentially get some buyers here. And what that may also mean is I don't have to invest an absorbent amount of money into the house before I sell it. So that's the good news that we got today. I'm really excited about that. Hopefully get this house sold, move on to the next chapter and kind of transition out of this area, which is something I've been really excited to do over the last few months. Well, since I put the house on the market. Other than that, man, we had a good weekend. Nothing crazy. Starting to get a little bit of strength back as far as my strength and my major compound lifts is concerned. I'm sitting comfortably at about 230, which is a little bit heavier than I was over the last few weeks. But I think this is a healthy weight for me. I'm maintaining the lean physique that I worked so hard to get. And we're going to be finally kind of transitioning off of the semaglutide. I think I've got one or two more injections of that. And then after the semaglutide, I may be looking at attempting to do some like IGF therapy, something that's more specific for muscle building. Not 100% sure exactly what I'm going to go with. I'm going to get on the horn with the guys over at Core Medical Group, and we're going to come up with a plan to try out some of these peptides that I think may be a good fit. One of the things that I've had clients rave about is the CJC1295 and IGF-1 LR3 I've done before. So there's also the Ipamorellans. So there's a lot of different peptides that we could look at trying. Again, my goal right now is to stay lean. I don't really want to get any heavier than I am, but maybe continue to drop my body fat more into the single digits. But one of the biggest challenges that I've had in the last, I would say, six weeks or so is continuing to maintain strength while cutting body fat and losing so much weight. As of right now, in this moment, down 22 pounds from where I was back in December. My peak in December was 252. Right now, like I said, I clocked in at 230 this morning. I got as low as 222, so we actually hit that 30 pounds loss threshold. But I noticed a significant decrease in my overall strength, specifically for the bench and the deadlift. My bench press, I think I hit 405 for a double yesterday, which was pretty weak for me and my numbers in the past. And right now, the most I can deadlift is about 575, which is about 40 pounds less than my PR. So it's not a huge, significant decrease in strength. And I think for the amount of weight that I've lost, it's actually really good. But not having that strength is something that's mentally challenging for me. So I think now that we've done a 12-week rotation where we focus on weight loss, we'll do something that's more geared towards building muscle and strength. 
So I think as we transition through the last couple doses of the semaglutide, we start to come up with a plan for exactly how we're going to go about prepping to put on as much mass as humanly possible without gaining too much body fat. That way we can go into that summer cut, maybe cut 15 pounds or so right before summer kicks off right after Memorial Day, and then we'll be Gucci. We'll be ready to go. We'll be standing on the beach, jack tan and fucking juicy, boy. Yeah. So we did week 11 check-in for our first two fire teams and groups. This team started back in December, and this week is their final week before graduation. As it stands today, there are seven left in both teams. So we are at 14 out of 24, which is about a just over 50% completion rate. I think it's pretty decent. I think we could do better, but unfortunately that initial wave of guys I don't think really – fully understood what they were getting themselves into. It's actually very challenging. This is a difficult coaching course. But what I will say is that for the guys who are finishing up their last week, and after me doing the coaching call that I did with them on Sunday, one of the biggest and most unexpected benefits that they got, even though I told them it was going to happen, was the camaraderie that they got from the guys that were in the group. And so for this podcast tonight, I want to spend some time talking about the importance of brotherhood, community, camaraderie for men. I think it's obvious for us to say that as men, we all face various challenges in our lives. And I think it's really, really important. And especially after watching the growth and the connections that these guys and fire teams made is that we need to understand that having a supportive network of other men who are on the same path and have the same set of goals and the same system of values and the same mindset that we do can make a fucking world of difference and just the overall quality of the experience that you have, how easy it is for you to stay motivated, as well as just your life in general. I hope you guys know that when you see in the comments for these podcasts and you see in the group, All these guys making these connections and they comment in the podcast, you know, let's go represent Team Delta, Team Alpha, Bravo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These guys aren't like paid actors that are coming onto the podcast and trying to rep their team. I want you to realize and understand that these dudes are actually proud of what they're putting in there and the work that they're doing and the team that they're on. Because one of the things that I teach during this coaching is your job is not to be held accountable. People think about the benefits that they get from being part of a group. Oh, it's really great to be part of this group because it offers me accountability. As men, our responsibility is to serve. That's the first job that we get. Number one, service. And so when we bring you into a group like this where there's 12 guys, yes, you are going to be held accountable. But the reason that you're going to be held accountable is because you do your job first, which is to hold the other men there accountable. And I want you to understand that by doing this, now it forces us to create a relationship of integrity with ourself. Because the last thing that you should be doing as a man is holding somebody to a higher standard than you hold yourself. And so if you're going to go into the fire team's training and you're going to go into your accountability group and your squad or your group of friends or your brothers or all that, and expect more from them when you didn't even do your part. That makes you a fucking beta back baby bitch. And you should get called out on it. So your job is to hold your team accountable. And the way that you do that is by first having the integrity to hold yourself accountable. You lead by example. And so this brotherhood and this community that is developed through these fire team coachings is such a phenomenal experience for these guys. I wanted to actually spend some time tonight talking about why it's so important. And I want you to understand that the world that we live in today, this whole idea of men being isolated and not having communities of other men, it hasn't always been like that. In traditional societies, men, they had strong bonds with other men and their communities, and through their jobs, and in all things that they did. This was through tribal cultures, medieval guilds, military units, whatever the case may be. And that didn't actually start to change or shift until the Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s. 
During that era, men started to work and socialize in more isolated and competitive environments. They were working longer hours, spending more time away from home, and the only time that they really spent with other men was while they're at work. This led over time to a loss of this very, very important sense of community and mentorship that men have relied on, basically, for all of time. It's only been over the past 150 years that we've really seen this shift in the way that men perceive what a proper social construct looks like and how they're supposed to engage and be involved with other men. So tonight I want to spend some time talking about the historical context of brotherhood and how these challenges have made it hard for men to find these meaningful connections. And hopefully tonight, by the end of the time that you spend with me, you can understand why it's so important for you to cultivate these relationships within the brotherhood and the communities that you can connect with. So hang out with me for the next half an hour or so, and we'll spend some time talking about this. And obviously, there's going to be some shameless plugs on all the different types of brotherhood that I offer and why I do what I do. But hopefully, it'll bring you to a place you can have a better understanding of the most important key takeaway that I'm going to teach you. This is you're not a fucking cool guy if you're a lone wolf. You're not James Bond. You're not Batman. I operate alone. We as men, we are tribal, connected. We are meant to be part of teams, and that's what we seek. So hopefully by the end of tonight, I can teach you why it's so important for us as men to create these connections with other men. And you can make a greater effort in your life to be more involved with these types of communities. And watch just as the guys who've been doing fire teams have seen how when you immerse yourself in that type of community, it creates so many fucking benefits for you. And the overall quality of your life increases significantly. So like I was saying earlier, in traditional societies, this whole concept of brotherhood and male bonding was something that was valued significantly. And the reason why it was important and why it was valued is because we as men need that mentorship. We need that accountability. We need that brotherhood. We need to know that we're not alone in the struggles that we face. And one of the things that I found is for a lot of the men that I work with now and that we've been working with who've been part of this community over the past few years, they all come from the same place where they have this perception of the world that their problems are unique. Their challenges are unique. Nobody understands what I'm going through. You just don't get it. This is my life and these are my problems. And because they've convinced themselves that they live on this island in this tiny little bubble where all their problems are unique to them, it becomes much easier for them to convince themselves that nobody else has their problems and therefore nobody else can understand or even know what they're going through or know how to fix them. So this becomes a contributor to mental health. It becomes a contributor to men continuing to perpetuate the problems that exist in their life because they feel like there's no solution. And the list goes on. When you go and introduce yourself to a community of men, now you've placed yourself in this position where they're going to call you on your bullshit. And if you are going through a problem that's not so unique, you now have people there who've not only been through what you've been through and can help you to come to a solution and create that solution in your life, but they can also support you in that because they're able to be empathetic. And so understand that the value of this community and the things that you can create when you immerse yourself in a brotherhood, it's much deeper than just having a bunch of buddies. Now, I know that I've already talked about over the last couple hundred years, we've lost that sense of community that men used to share. And I think it's really important to understand why this happened. And so first, let's talk about social media. I would make the argument that it's easier than ever today to connect with people all around the world. It's easier than ever today to connect with people all around the world who have similar interests, similar demographics, similar skill sets, similar passions. Think about just Facebook as an example. There's literally a Facebook group for just about everything. If I want to find a fucking Facebook group on basket weaving, I can find one. And there's going to be people in that group who are committed to being the best fucking underwater basket weavers on the planet. It exists. Scuba diving, hiking, swimming, skateboarding, basketball. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever your interest is, whatever your hobby is, whatever you're passionate about, today it's easier than it ever was to find a community of thousands of people. 
who have the same interests. Isn't it interesting that despite the fact that it's easier than ever to connect with people, social media has also led to a decrease in face-to-face -face interactions and actually created a greater sense of isolation for people writ large. So like I said, today we're more connected than we've ever been, but we're also socially, mentally, and emotionally more isolated than we ever were. I think that people also choose the surface level interactions that they find on social media as a way to get cheap hits of dopamine instead of actually taking the time to build meaningful connections and relationships with people the old fashioned way. Back in the day, it was much more difficult to create meaningful relationships and find people who shared similar passions and interests. So therefore, when you actually found those people, you didn't take those relationships for granted and you made the effort to develop that relationship rather than look at people and things as more disposable because they're so readily available. This can create some pretty significant consequences in the life of man. I would make the argument that the lack of community, camaraderie, and brotherhood for a man affects relationships, their ability to effectively navigate any type of relationship, not just their friendships, their career, and their personal growth. Without having a support network, men are more likely to feel stressed and overwhelmed. This directly affects their mental, their physical health. And without a sense of community, men also struggle to find purpose and fulfillment in their careers and personal lives. I would make the argument that the guys who've been doing fire teams, they live in this world where they don't want to let their teammates down by failing to fulfill the obligations that they made to themselves. They feel like they have to earn their spot on that team to be given that same title. And because they wake up and they want to earn that seat, now it makes the work that they're doing more meaningful and it gives them purpose and something to work towards. And so now when we've created a community and a team or a brotherhood of men who's driving towards a similar goal, it makes them feel as if they are part of something that's greater than themselves. And not just that, just like James said in the chat, is the relationships that are built upon hardship and challenge are stronger because the men who forged those relationships had to endure a similar challenge or shared hardship where now there's a mutual respect that's developed between those men because they know how difficult that challenge or hardship was. And so now you're being forged by these challenges in your life and it's shared. So there's a bond that's created with these men because they shared that challenge with you. And I think that's pretty powerful. And it's definitely something that the folks in, and not just the fire teams, but also the brotherhood experience since we started it. So like I was saying earlier, this is something that was normal in society. This goes back to that adage that I had talked about a few weeks ago, where I said the woman's responsibility is to raise the child into a boy. And the father's responsibility is to raise that boy into a man. And when it's time for that young man to transition into becoming a man, a lot of times he's inducted into some type of fraternity that has to do with what his father does or his trade or whatever it is that they're going to be part of within their culture or their community. And now that young man has become part of that community of other men where he's held to that same standard. And so during the Industrial Revolution, Many men, they left that traditional community and they found themselves where they're going to the cities to seek employment in factories. And this really started to happen during the introduction of electricity, where factory owners realized that they could run their facilities 24 hours a day. And this is really where the eight hour workday was born and the whole process of the whole transition into what we are now, where people live to work instead of work to live. You think about it today. Most men, they live in this world where they feel that all they do is just live to work. A couple hundred years ago, before the introduction of these factories and the eight-hour workday and the Industrial Revolution, men, they just worked so that they could live and make a living. And so what happens is this change in the way that men worked and socialized because they were now living in this place where they're isolated from their families, they're isolated from their communities, and now they're introduced to this hyper-competitive environment where there was a shortage of jobs and promotions and opportunity afforded by these factories. 
So they started finding themselves in a place where they have to work longer hours and more physically demanding jobs. And they basically had no time or energy for socializing, building relationships, spending time with their family, raising their children. And they found themselves in a place where the social construct that this brotherhood of men was founded on for thousands of years had dissipated because men could no longer live in this world where they had the time to even do those things. And I'm sure the things that I'm describing are things that you feel like you struggle with today. I don't have the time to take care of myself because I'm either too tired, I'm too broke, or I lack motivation. And I'm to this place where I just, it's not worth it because the juice isn't worth the squeeze. I just don't feel like I have enough in me to do one more thing. Take that whole situation and stack it on the fact that all these jobs were in the city. These cities became disgusting. You're close right next to your neighbor. There's no space to stretch out to go do anything. You don't enjoy the outdoors. And so now it's creating this sense of isolation, like you're almost trapped and imprisoned by this life that you live. And so as men transitioned into this new modern world of working, they found that it was more and more difficult to develop and create and find meaningful relationships with other men or brotherhood. I think that one of the biggest things that really impacts this lack of community and brotherhood for modern men is social media, like we talked about earlier. It gives us this false sense of connection. It makes it more difficult for us to form genuine in-person relationships. Hookup culture is a thing. We have started to look at people as disposable I can't tell you how many times I've had to remind customers or people messaging my page that I'm actually a person. You know that you're talking to a person, right? How many times have you found yourself in a position where you started to get frustrated with customer service? Mad because this person doesn't speak your language or you're not getting what you want or they double charged you or there was some mistake and you don't feel like you're getting the customer service that you need and you like lose your fucking temper on this person. I know I have. How many times have you found yourself maybe inadvertently being rude or disrespectful towards a service or wait staff because you had a fucking bad day or something they did or said rubbed you the wrong way? How many times have you found yourself in a place where you saw a person in public who you could tell was having a hard time or needed help and you chose to look the other way because it would inconvenience your day? The internet dehumanizes we don't look at these people on here as people. We look at these people as how can they benefit me? What am I going to get from them? This is another human being that I'm talking to. And part of the reason why we're so depressed and struggle with creating these meaningful connections on social media is because we don't look at them as people. And the same thing applies to this hookup culture. It makes it more difficult for men to find long-term committed relationships with women who have that same mindset where they want to create a long-term committed relationship. And so let's just get this temporary feeling of satisfaction and what we believe to be happiness in the moment by bumping uglies. And then they wonder why they're so unfulfilled, unhappy, depressed, and don't have the things that they feel like they should have in their life as far as emotional connection is concerned. We've become emotionally, mentally, and spiritually empty shells of people begging for interaction. But the introduction of things like social media has made that extremely difficult because of the way that we view people. The other part of the reason why we as men as a culture find it difficult to create brotherhood amongst other men is there aren't as many cultural institutions that encourage that type of camaraderie and community for men. Think about Boy Scouts, YMCA, Big Brother. The list goes on. Back in the 80s and 90s, I remember when I was a kid, there was all sorts of outlets for young men to go and create connections with other men. It was normal for us as men to use churches and fraternal organizations, labor unions, Boy Scouts, sports, to create those connections and brotherhood. Now, if you sign your fucking son up for Boy Scouts, and that's something that he's proud of and he goes through, it's very likely he's going to get bullied at school because of it. And so the only time that men nowadays experience that type of cultural institutional brotherhood is things like in the police force, military, or fire department. 
And in places where it's a heavily or mostly male dominated industry that requires a lot of risk because that bond is created through shared hardship or risk. That's why dudes in the military who've gone to war together are lifelong friends. That's why police officers are so tight because they have a shared hardship. They have a shared risk. They go to work every day knowing that might be the last day that they go to work. So Brandon said, fire teams has given me the close brotherhood that I haven't felt since I was active duty in the military. That close knit bond forged through challenges and trials, embracing the suck together. There you go. Perfect example, Brandon. And so nowadays we don't have those institutions. And that's exactly why I started the Brotherhood Facebook group is because I realized I didn't have a place like that anymore. After my military service, I felt isolated. And when I created that group, my intention was to create a place on the internet where guys like me could come together and we could talk about shit that we like, like getting fucking jacked. And now the group, after a few years, has 26,000 members. And it's a phenomenal place. And most of the reason why it's such a phenomenal place is because I've been so diligent about making sure that there wasn't toxicity or negativity or nasty criticisms or disrespectful people that were in the group. And any time they came and they decided they want to impose that upon the group, I had a zero tolerance for it. None, zero whatsoever. And once you're kicked out, you're gone. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, bro. That's it. You are out. Men actually have something in this group that they're proud of. They wear its logo on their shirt. And I think that's powerful. I think we as men need to have brotherhoods, have community like this. Because when we don't, like I said, it affects our relationships. It affects our careers. And it affects our personal growth and our ability to get better as men. If I don't have a supportive community of other men, I might find myself in a place where I struggle to create healthy relationships with people because I don't know what those look like. It creates this sense and this feeling like a lot of guys I talk to and a lot of my clients feel where they're lonely, they're isolated. And that has a long-term effect on your mental health and your well-being. I want you to think about back in your college days or high school days when you were part of a sport and all the buddies that you had. And then you went off into the world and you got married and had kids. Next thing you know, you don't have any friends. That's not how you as men were supposed to, to live. A brotherhood also is great for your career, your business, because it allows you to leverage your network of supported peers as well as people who can mentor you or maybe further down your path, offer you career advice or job opportunities that can help you advance. Men who don't have that type of support, they find it more difficult to get ahead in their careers because they feel like they have to do it alone, usually at the cost of other men. Brotherhood can also be a key factor in your personal growth as a man and your personal development because you're able to create meaningful connections with other men and you can gain new perspective and learn from each other's experiences. You're no longer going through life alone, unable to learn from the experiences of the last guy who failed at that or screwed that up. And so what this does is allows you to get there faster and make less mistakes while also being able to develop new skills and knowledge from the guys that are part of your community. Without these connections, you're gonna find yourself in a place where you struggle to grow. It's like every fucking day you're going through this world where you're trying to recreate the wheel. When little do you know, there's 20 other guys over here in this group who've already created that wheel. Think about how much further you would be is if you could immerse yourself with a community of men who have similar goals and ideas as you and are on that same journey and path towards creating success and greatness for their personal growth and their career. Think about how awesome it would be to have a community of other men who may have already gone through a similar situation in their relationship with their wives or their children. And they can offer you meaningful advice on how you can navigate that situation so that you can show up as the best father or husband that you could potentially be. We as men need brotherhood. We need community. We need camaraderie. These types of brotherhoods and the one that we've created here, it offers accountability. Like I was talking about earlier, men who are part of a brotherhood are more likely to have someone hold them accountable for their actions, goals, and behavior. It leads to increased motivation and productivity because you don't want to disappoint the guys in the next foxhole over. It gives you a sense of responsibility over the commitments that you make. Rather than living in this world where you don't feel like anybody will know any better if you fucking 
miss a day or you don't show up. A brotherhood offers emotional support where it provides a safe place for men to open up and talk about their feelings, which isn't something that we often feel safe in being able to do. It increases our emotional intelligence. It gives us better mental health. It makes it easier for us to navigate our emotional or mental issues and get advice from people who are actually genuinely supportive of us rather than using those vulnerabilities as tools to get leverage against us. We need that support. Being part of a brotherhood can help provide opportunities for personal growth, like I talked about earlier, with your business, your job, or your career. We have the ability to learn from each other, challenge each other, work together to achieve common goals. This is going to give you guys a greater sense of awareness, improve skills, and a sense of purpose. And I know the guys who are part of fire teams would agree. And this is absolutely part of the fire team stuff is being part of a brotherhood gives you a sense of belonging. We as people, as men, as human beings, want to feel like we're part of something greater than we are. And we want to belong to something. When you have a supportive male community, a brotherhood, it will give you a sense of belonging and connection. There's no question that this improves your overall sense of well-being, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health. Increases your confidence, increases your resilience, increases your grit, and it's going to give you a more positive outlook on life because you feel like you're part of something that's greater than you. So here's the thing, guys, is I want you to really take the time to realize that we're not meant to be lone wolves. And this is coming from the guy who thought he was a lone wolf. I don't have to rely on anybody but me. I'm going to go into the world and I'm going to fucking do what I'm going to do and fuck them if they don't think I can. Watch me do it by myself. We're meant to be tribal, connected. We're meant to share hardships as a community of men. It's in human nature to form bonds and work towards a common goal. This whole idea of the lone wolf has been romanticized in pop culture, like I said, with superheroes and movie TV stars. And often we find ourselves in this place where men are portrayed as these solitary figures and they don't need anyone. And that's been the epitome of what we've considered masculinity is this strong man who lives in this solitary nature. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, it couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is we as human beings are social animals who thrive on connection and community. I'm going to be real with you. The men who claim to be lone wolves, what they're really saying when they say I work better alone or I'm not good on a team or I don't want to be part of a team is they lack the social skills necessary to set aside their egos and work as part of a team or on something that is greater than themselves, period. You have to be able to follow in order to lead. You have to be part of a team as a member first. Yes, absolutely, it's important to build the certain capability of autonomy and competence, 100%. But we as men are more effective as a group, as a community, as a team. We'll always be more effective. And if we're not, that's because we lack the social skills that are necessary in order to be effective as a team. Being part of a supportive male community, a brotherhood, it provides us with a sense of belonging, accountability, emotional support. It's essential for our well-being. We need to be able to share our struggles and our triumphs. We need to feel like people understand what we're going through. Like I said, I wanted to spend some time talking about the importance of brotherhood, the benefits of brotherhood, and why we've seen it dissipate in modern culture over the past couple hundred years because... I think a lot of us who are part of our Facebook group, they take it for granted and they don't quite understand exactly what it's supposed to be. I want you guys to realize that this community and the things that I'm building here and what I'm trying to create with the Brotherhood and the Iron Forge and everything that we're doing is it's about creating a place where you as men feel like not only can you be part of something more, but you also have the ability to step into a place as servant leaders and create an impact on the world and help other men. And so look at the Facebook group that you're in as not just an opportunity for you to get the accountability, the support, the information, the knowledge, the skills that you need to go on your path. Instead, look at it as an opportunity for you to provide that to other men. There aren't very many places on the internet or in the world where you have a community like the one that we've built that is going to give you the opportunity to create the impact that you want to create. The primary responsibility in the way that we do the fire teams training 
is your job when you join this is to first hold your team accountable. You're not joining the fire team's coaching so that you can get the accountability and you can get the support. It's not about you. You're joining the coaching so that you can help the 11 other guys on the team. And the only way that you're going to do that is by first doing what you need to do so that you can hold them to that standard and hold them accountable. And so now you look at your life and you look at your team and you look at the world and you look at your brotherhood as I have to prove that I deserve to fucking be here. If I want to walk amongst giants, I have to be a giant. And if I fail to show up, I fail to stand integrity with the values that this brotherhood represents, I don't want to disappoint them. And so a lot of us men, we find ourselves in this place where we struggle with depression. We struggle with anxiety. We struggle with feeling a sense of fulfillment. We struggle with purpose. And part of that has a lot to do with the fact that we don't have a brotherhood to lean on to help us create those feelings of purpose and integrity and fulfillment. Having a community like this is phenomenal for your mental health. And that's part of the reason why I started and structured the fire teams coaching the way that I did was because I realized how much of a fucking impact that the camaraderie that I got while I was in the military gave me and the mindset that it gave me and the shift and change upon the world that it gave me. And I think that now that we have the group that's finally coming through and they're finishing this 12th week of fire teams coaching, they're starting to realize how valuable that really is. And how important it is to have that community. So much, in fact, that I think 12 out of the 14 guys who are going to graduate this week have committed to another 12 weeks of fire teams phase two just so that they could continue to have access to that camaraderie, that brotherhood, that community, and that accountability that comes from that brotherhood. The Iron Forge, that's the idea. That's why we do group coaching calls and we get on and you guys share the struggles and ask questions and I coach all of you together. We've got guys who've gotten the Iron Forge tattooed on them because of the impact that brotherhood has created in their lives. The Brotherhood Facebook group, that's what that's intended to be. And now Fire Teams, that's also what that's intended to be. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me, guys. If you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed the podcast, it would be greatly appreciated if you could take the time to share the podcast with anybody who you think might benefit from it. And just so you guys know, if you're looking to sign up for the Brotherhood, the free Facebook group, the Iron Forge, or Fire Teams, there's a link in the description of this video below. Or if you can't find it or you struggle, joshholyfield.com. You should find all the links there. Or just send me a message on whatever social channel works best for you, and I'll get you squared away. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me on this beautiful Tuesday evening. God bless you guys. And for those of you guys who are part of the Iron Forge group coaching, I will see you Thursday. God bless. Stay vigilant.